Hi guys and welcome to the trading show. This week we are gonna talk about Markets meets rise Our portfolio bonds fly Tip of the week boon future And the weekly rollover And if you are interested in systematic trading then subscribe to our channel I am Francesco Placci, head of R&D at Ungar Academy. Let's start from the market overview to see together what happened during the week. Well guys, also this week we see positive returns for the equity markets, especially for the European markets, which outperformed the American ones, S&P and Nasdaq. In particular, the Nasdaq, after a crazy race, took a break during the current week. The worst financial sector is the energy sector. You see negative returns for gasoline, for natural gas and heating oil, while crude oil remained unchanged. Meats are certainly the best sector, with returns ranging from 4% to 7% for Linux. This sector shows positive returns at one week, one month and even three months. About cryptocurrency, there is not much to report. The Bitcoin future is unchanged at both one week and one month. And despite the halving, there is no trace of explosive movement. At the moment, it seems testing a support. As regards volatility, high ranking values persist on an annual basis, while on a monthly basis, there is a return to the average except for uh, cereals, which uh, all show an increase in volatility in the last period, as for example on wheat and soybean future. Talking about implied volatility, there is not much to report. The situation is very similar to the previous week. We can see the VIX index in contango, except for uh, the VIX at one year which, as you know, is uh, usually the highest of the VIX indexes. I want to point out uh, instead how abnormal the term structure of uh, VIX futures is. In fact, uh, we see the first expirations in contango, while the other ones are in backwardation. This anomaly is due to the American elections and uh, means that the traders fear stock market crashes during the election period. Based on my experience, this is one of the most unusual term structures I have ever seen. After seeing some key statistics on financial markets and given the fact that automated traders also use this data to build their trading strategies, as usual, we will now take a look at our portfolio of trading strategies to see how systems have reacted to current market conditions. Hello guys, from Alessandro Danos and welcome to this new appointment with the analysis of our portfolio. This week there's not much to show as the markets in which we are most exposed have not registered remarkable movements. The first system I want to show you is a strategy on the German Bund that we can define bias as the system enters at specific time and day and closes the next day in the morning, Frankfurt time. We can see that in the last week the results were very good. The system produced this nice series of positive trades. Here is there also a short trade. And we can see from the strategy performance report that the resu results are good, especially in the last period where the system managed to reach new peaks in equity line 
and that was due to that nice series of trades that the system made. Above all, the poor buy and hold of the instrument, where we can see a sideways movement in the last period. The strategy managed to perform better than the simple buy and hold of the future itself. So we are quite happy of the results obtained by the strategy. Well guys, now I want to show you another system, always uh, remaining on the interest rate markets. And specifically, I want to talk about the treasury bond future. The system uses a 30 minute time frame and enters in a reversal wave on the pivot points. In the last week we can see how the strategy managed to reach good profits, also on the short side, that we know is very difficult on the interest rates markets. And now the strategy is long from this level. Taking a look to the performance report, we can see that the strategy passed through a bad period during uh, May and June. And now, after uh, the drawdown, the system recovered well after this uh, good uh, series of trades, reaching almost new peaks in the equity curve. Well guys, the last system I want to show you is a strategy on uh, Nasdaq future that is facing a sideways uh, period, maybe caused by the bad period that the strategy faced in the last months. We can see how in the last week the system has been on one end a bit unlucky, as is the case with this chart, where the Nasdaq thought it well to take the stop and then start again in the direction on which uh, had bet the strategy. And on the other hand, he managed to achieve a take profit, always with uh, the short, managing to balance, to balance the losses produced in the last month in an acceptable manner. The strategy in question is a reversal which enters with limit orders on the maximum and minimum levels of the previous day and keeps the position open until reaching a stop loss or a take profit or in reverse of the position. The equity line is obviously the mirror of this lateral trend in which positive and negative trades have alterned denoting a rather lateral curve, but which is showing signs of recovery, as can also be seen from the monthly period analysis, in which it is possible to note that following four really bad months, the strategy is managing to recover the losses obtained in the past few months, indicating an improvement trend which gives us hope for the future. Taking a look at the annual results of the system, we can see that in any case, the result in the current year remains positive, also managing to maintain a decent average trade of around $100. The result of a gain of over $5,800 in 61 trades. Hello everyone, uh, welcome from uh, Andrea Nebbiolo and uh, today we will anal analyze uh, um, a bias on the Bund uh, future. So the Bund future is the uh, future on the uh, Bund uh, uh, bond, that is the 10-year uh, uh, German governative uh, uh, bond. And uh, in this case here, we are analyzing the intraweek uh, bias. So in, in this chart, uh, we can see the cumulated sum of the average movement of each 60 minute bars that occur in the trading week. So this represents a sort of average uh, behavior of the Bund future during uh, a trading week. 
So here you can see that, for example, on the blue line and on the black line, there was a very significant, significant movement in this part of the, of the chart. So it seems that in the previous past, on Monday, there was an, a rising movement on Monday. But in the recent times, it seems not to be confirmed as well as on Tuesday, in the recent period, there is this uh, rising movement, while in the past uh, there was, uh, on average, a uh, descending movement. So uh, I would personally avoid uh, taking into account uh, uh, this data of Monday and Friday, just because uh, um, the periods doesn't match as, uh, as behavior. So what, what, uh, what is interesting uh, to my eyes. It's interesting to my eyes the behavior of uh, Thursday and Friday and uh, in particular it seems uh, that uh, from uh, the mid of the morning on uh, Thursday it starts uh, an, uh, a rising movement that lasts uh, until uh, Friday afternoon. And uh, you can see that here even if in uh, a different way there is this uh, rising uh, movement and uh, it usually starts at uh, 11 a.m. on uh, Thursday and on average it uh, ends at uh, 18, so at 6 p.m. of Friday. So what I did uh, uh, further, I backtested uh, this uh, uh, set of rules uh, in uh, multicharts and uh, you can see here the equity curve of the resulting uh, strategy and uh, you can see of course uh, the strategies goes uh, pretty well and uh, it's interesting because uh, the rule of the strategies uh, this, of this strategy are really simple so in, in general we we buy at uh, uh, Thursday at a, uh, on Thursday at uh, 11 a.m. and then we sell on uh, Friday at 6 uh, p.m. so we close the, the long position at 6 p.m. on uh, Friday. And of course this strategy can be filtered uh, more just to improve the quality of uh, the trades uh, and to reduce uh, a little more the drawdowns. But uh, in any case, uh, in my opinion, it's, it's just uh, good uh, as it is uh, and uh, it's not as necessary to filter a lot uh, this kind of uh, filter and then uh, um, this should help to reduce the risk of overfitting. The strategy in general doesn't produce uh, gain uh, every year. There are two losing year, but uh, of course uh, it's uh, a good base to start uh, coding something more uh, uh, complex uh, or just maybe this can be useful to avoid uh, going short on the Bund uh, on Thursday and on Friday. Well, next for lovers, there will be the settlement of uh, crude oil future on July 21, but we know that in reality the expiration with the largest volumes is uh, on September since uh, last week. And the same goes for natural gas future. Certainly next week uh, there will be also the VIX future rollover. In the following days we will have the rollover on uh, heating oil and gasoline futures which have their settlement date on July 31st, but as usual, the greatest open interest is already on the next maturity. And finally, I remind you that Bitcoin future will expire at the end of the month. Okay guys, so if you want to learn how to build trading systems like Andrea Unger, the only four-time trading world champion with real money, go ahead and click on the link below. It's our free webinar during which you will see the steps to build your trading systems and become a profitable trader, how to have an edge over other traders and professionals in the sector, and how to build a diversified portfolio of automated strategies. Finally, if you liked this video, 
press like and then subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching. See you next week with another episode of The Trading Show.